Hello, and welcome to our 31st graduation of GWC. We have a lovely program laid out for you in this online event. A little later on, you're going to hear a message from our graduation speaker, Joseph Galgallo, who filmed his talk in Nairobi, especially for this occasion. Dr. Galgallo is the Vice Chancellor of St. Paul's University in Lumuru in Kenya and has been Professor of Systematic Theology in the Faculty of Theology of St. Paul's for many years. He obtained his PhD from the University of Cambridge and he has remained an evangelical Christian throughout his career. In his bio, Dr. Galgallo describes himself as a born-again Christian, an ordained minister in the Anglican Church of Kenya and an honorary canon of All Saints Cathedral in Nairobi. He's married to Jane and they have three children. Dr. Galgallo has served on many committees and councils, the recipient of numerous awards, and he's also an author. So it is with great delight that I welcome you to our event, Joseph, and I pray that God will bless your word to our hearts as we listen to you in a few minutes' time. As principal of GWC, I have the honor and privilege of presenting my report to you at this, as I mentioned earlier, our 31st graduation and our first graduation done online. For 31 years, we've been graduating students who come to us not just from South Africa, but also from most of Sub-Saharan Africa. So as you think of the college and as you pray for us, Please join us in saying thank you to God for his generosity and mercy for establishing GWC and giving us the job of training people for his kingdom in many African countries. Now a word about our student enrollment for next year. Despite the pandemic, we have a pretty good intake for 2021. At GWC, we have a three-year program. It's an undergraduate program, the Bachelor of Theology, and we also have a one-year program, which is the Higher Certificate in Theology. I'm happy to say that we're expecting 15 students for that first year certificate and 23 for the first year Bachelor of Theology. If you add those together, it means we have 38 new students next year, with more than a third of that number being women. The total number of uh, full-time students at GWC will be, God willing, 117, of which 40% are from REACH South Africa. REACH stands for Reformed Evangelical Anglican Church which is a major stakeholder for GWC. I want to add that we welcome students from many other churches too. Baptist and independent Christian churches send us students because they recognize that our main focus is on knowing God through Christ and knowing how to handle the Bible properly. Also graduating tonight are BTH Honors students. GWC, in addition, also has a uh, master's program and we're hoping that in the not too distant future, we will have our own PhD program too. Now some words of thanks. We are so grateful to God who has been kind, so kind to us at GWC during this pandemic and during the lockdown. I'm especially grateful to Jesus for answering our prayers and enabling us to steer clear of what is a monstrous pestilence. The Anglican prayer book urges us to pray this way, O oh God, the Father of heaven, have mercy upon us sinners. It actually says miserable sinners. O oh God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us miserable sinners. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, proceeding from the Father and the Son, have mercy upon us miserable sinners. And then it goes on to say, from lightning and storm, from plague, pestilence and famine, from war and murder and from sudden death, good Lord, deliver us. All Christians in Africa do pray this and will go on praying this as they continue to use the form and content of the ancient prayer book, though of course where possible in local languages. Now, whilst it is true that many people will praise humanity for the discovery of a vaccine, in reality it is God who sovereignly controls the emergence of disease and he also controls our deliverance from it. That is why we pray and he answers our prayers. Just one more brief quote, if I may, from the prayer book and from that prayer quoted earlier. Please give us true repentance, the prayer book says, 
and forgive us all our sins, all our negligences and our ignorances, and bless us with the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your Holy Word. Wherever you are, and you're listening to this broadcast, if you're conscious that you've sinned against God, why not turn to his son Jesus and call on him to save you? His death on the cross was so that people like you and me could be forgiven. Now this graduation event is where we celebrate our students who have worked exceptionally hard during a very difficult year with lockdown and with transition to online learning. They have come through all of that to earn their certificate or their degree. We are very grateful to God for them and we look forward to hearing about their progress beyond the college as they help extend God's kingdom in Africa. Our vision is that our graduates will increase Africa's share in the kingdom of God. All those who come and study at GWC or who enroll in our Explore Distance program, all these are people in whom a big investment has been made. If you have been supporting a student financially or perhaps by consistent prayer and encouragement or in some other way, then I hope you take special pleasure in sharing this time with us. A word of thanks is due to the Board of Directors of GWC who have given so much of their time to govern so well. Particularly, I wish to thank Dale Smith who has provided such excellent chairmanship. Thanks too to our donor partners, the 17, for their gifts, prayers, and I want to say thank you particularly to the past chair, Hugo Nelson, and a welcome to the new chair of the 17, Akil Sasha. We are also grateful to those of you who are special friends of the college, and we want to say thank you as well to all the churches that support us and to all who have given so generously this year. And lastly, to family and friends who are sharing this event with us via the internet, we are so pleased you can share in this happy occasion with us. The Board of Directors of George Whitefield College, the management, the principal, Reverend Dr. Mark Dixon, the vice principal, Dr. Jonathan Moore, all faculty members and staff, students, graduates, supporters, and all invited guests, I greet you all in the name of Jesus and congratulate you on this happy occasion of your 31st graduation ceremony 2020. Thank you for according me this great honor to be your commencement speaker this year 2020. How I wish to have joined you in person to celebrate this great day. I thank God for technology, otherwise we would not have met at all. Technology is great, but by no means perfect in every way. I should be forgiven, for example, for wondering whether I am addressing the right audience. One can never be sure, can you? In any case, congratulations to you all, and especially the graduates. Dear graduates, you are setting out to serve at a time when the world is in constant change and upheaval. The challenges of the 21st century are by no means unique, although certainly enormous in scale and intensity. Humanity is continually adjusting to life on Earth. Even before the coronavirus pandemic, People have been on the move like never before. People movement is not just physical or limited to immigrants only. It involves movements in cultural adjustments, advancement in knowledge and technological adaptations, cross-cultural engagements, and finding our space within growing globalization. Individuals and communities are constantly negotiating a space, identity, and purpose. The constant movement of peoples and cultures are typically characterized by progress and brokenness, all at the same time. The more humanity progresses, the more, ironically, we witness degradation of the environment, the loss of humanness, the rise of illnesses, widespread conflicts, and seemingly irreconcilable differences between cultures. How can this beautiful world in which God has lovingly placed us, a world full of possibilities, is also so broken and stands in need of healing, rec reconciliation, and the knowledge of God? These ills are largely the sources of today's untold suffering for millions around the world. 
If this dark world ever needed light, the time is now. As you join others in the field to serve, you will be thrown into and become part and parcel of the constant movements and changes which the world is experiencing. George Whitefield College has prepared you to be able to negotiate your own journey within the varied movements. To be effective, let your calling be always clear to you. You have been equipped first and foremost with the word of God. Let that word dwell in you richly. Let the word be your constitution to live by, to guide you day and night as a lamp to your feet and a light on your path. That is the light you are called to hold up to the world, to illuminate parts of many who daily negotiate life's multi-directional movements. It should never be lost to you that you have enormous responsibilities, but also great privilege. Whatever your job description may be, you have, first and foremost, been entrusted with the proclamation of God's word to God's world. God's word is often at cross purpose with the ways of the world. The ministry requires a deep connection to God, but also a respectable appreciation of the realities of the world we live in. For you to be effective, be alive to the realities of your context, while at the same time holding up the light of the gospel to influence the world movements and moments. Always remember, you are in the world, but not of the world. Engage with the world by being alive to the realities you live in. Relentlessly pursue the answer to the number one question for today's minister of the word. How can the church of God, tasked with the mission of God to God's world, be effective? If you find a satisfactory answer to this question, you will find your true calling. And you know what impact God has called you to make in his world. A story is told of two young fish swimming together. They met an older fish swimming in the opposite direction. The older fish nods at them and says, Morning, youngsters. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on a bit. And then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, What the hell is water? A clueless church becomes irrelevant and important to influence the world with the word of God. The church, a lot of the time, and unfortunately so, is often playing catch up with the trends in the world, and its movement is simply determined by the movements or the realities of the times and the context in which the church exists. This situation of a lukewarm church or a church which has lost touch with the world or is so conformed to the point of becoming just part of the many movements of the world is nothing new. Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans, urges his readers in chapter 12, verse 2, not to conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Only then would they be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The deficiency of the church is not that God-given values do not work. No, not at all. The problem is that often the ministers of the world are so conformed to the ways of this world that they have lost their way and thereby abrogated their God-given power to call the world back to God, to hold up the light and to show the world what true purpose of life and salvation look like. Can the church set the pace and their gender and influence values we live by. The values we live by highly determine the direction of the various movements which we constantly experience. If we are deeply connected to God and also remain alive to the realities of the context in which we serve, it is possible to impart biblical values, effect healing, reconciliation, and create a humane society a society empowered to experience abundant life in all its fullness as God intends for the world. To live in this world and yet living above it in conformity to God's word is never easy. To encourage you, let me borrow the words of one Bono who makes this observation. 
that the world is more malleable than you think, and it is waiting for you to hammer it into shape. Of course, we cannot fix every problem, corruption, deep-seated divisions, and conflict between communities, pandemics, or natural calamities. The point I take from this thought is this. With that hammer in your hands, or the training you have received, however little the hammer may be, you can bring some shape to your small corner of your world. We may not influence or shape every movement and every trend in the world, but each one of us can do our bit as the Lord enables us. This conviction gives us so much hope. And the reason for our hope is this. Nothing is impossible with God. With faith in our hearts, right mental framework or attitude to life, Nothing out of shape cannot be shaped, and nothing on the wrong path cannot be redirected in the right direction. Only those who cry impossibilities are blind to the infinite options and possibilities God has put before us. Be a little bold and take Jesus' words literally. Go ye, make, teach, overcome the world in his name. You will be surprised by what God can do. The possibilities are unlimited. I wish someone says amen to that. Remember also, as a teacher, pastor, leader, administrator, and preacher, you are first and foremost an influencer. This reminds me of, of an inspirational saying by one Saint Expure, that if you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. You have God's whole wide world. Surely you cannot fail to inspire people to long for the immensity of God and what he can do, and by his grace, what humanity is capable of. And finally then, I wish you God's every blessing and guidance in your varied ministries. May the Lord be always with you to direct your movements, ministry and impact and in the words of the writer of the epistle to the hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 and verse 21 now may the god of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep equip you with every good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. Congratulations once again. Thank you and God bless you all. Dear 2020 graduates, congratulations. By God's grace, you've done it. Through all the trials and disappointments of 2020, you have endured and you have persevered. And I firmly believe that when we look back on this year, all those big bumps of disappointments, all those big bumps of adversity, they were the times when you were forced to hold on to and cling more firmly to our God. And here we are, celebrating the good thing that God has started in you and is continuing to this very day. It's been a privilege to get to know you and a joy for your service and presence to form our community here at GWC. And I'm excited to see what will happen next, what God will do with you next, where God will take you next, and what he will teach you next. Let me finish with this section from Philippians 1. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it into completion in the day by the day of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ, amen. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you, the class of 2020, on the occasion of your graduation. You have worked very hard to be where you are at the moment. There have been tears, uh, there have been sweating, 
There have been sleepless nights as you undertook your studies, but the grace of the Lord has kept you going. What a joy it has been for me to get to know you over the past three years. We all know that 2020 has not been an easy year. It has been difficult for everyone. The COVID-19 has hit us hard and caught us by surprise. In some ways, the life of ministry will be full of surprises. You will have to adjust as you go along, but the ministry will also be full of joys. Now we send you out to serve the Lord and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. We beg you with our love and our prayers. When somebody gets to undertake a journey, they need something to eat on the road. And I give you this verse, which is found in Matthew 9, verse 35, and it reads as follows. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and all the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now I pray that this prayer will be answered in you. Congratulations. Thank you. We now come to announcing our graduates for 2020. First, graduating with our Explore Certificate are McAnthony Bunder, Craig Barker, Emmanuel Bongwe, George Bracey, Maria Cavallo, Madeira Sabola, Caution Chibamu, Manasa Sibangwa, Amos J. Lossi. Eugelio Jamie, Kurukwashe Katio, Ingrid Kjornstadt, Zivanai Kufakunesi, Zodwa Lekebu, Lance Mchlake, Dowdy Makuyula, Gift Mbengo, Castro Member, Nomta Mugale, Lebohang Molo, Chadiso Molo, Kevin Morafo, Tokozile Mshibe, Hermena Gilda Mutamar. William Mwaliwa, Charles Ndlovu,
Alan Niawata. Hilliard Nyman. Norman Peary. Manessi Sande. Moshimane Seloane. Ine Sundström. Denise Symes. Tayong Tumo. Louise van der Beel. Justina Vereen. Nathan Verips. and Kathleen Wood. Students graduating with our highest certificate in theology are Joseph Chalufia. Hello, my name is Joseph Michael. My plan is to come next year for a BTH program. Please pray for me, thank you. Garang Chol. Hi, my name is Garang Lek. Please pray for me as I come back next year for BTH. Thank you. Eden Heasley, who graduates with distinction. Hi, my name is Eden Heasley. Please pray for me as I continue in my studies next year doing the BTH1. Suama Joshua in children's ministry. Hi, my name is Suama Joshua. Please pray for me as I'll be serving next year in Germany as a children's worker. Jasmine Kanyenda. Hi, my name is Jasmine Kanyenda. Please pray for me as I plan on coming back to GWC for BTH1 next year. Tokuzani Mtungwa. Hi guys, my name is Tokuzani Mtungwa. Please pray for me as I plan to come back next year to GWC for BTH. Thank you. Joshua Muwowo. Hi guys, my name is Joshua Muwowo. I just want to ask that you pray for me even as I uh, prepare to come back next year for BTH and go through my visa processions. Thank you. Sarah Olofsa in Children's Ministry. Hi, my name's Sarah. Please pray for me next year as I go study teaching at Varsity College. Nico Percent in Children's Ministry. Please pray for Nico as he continues his ministry as a youth facilitator at St. Paul's Church in Lavender Hill. Randall Sardien. Hi, I'm Randall Sardien. Please pray for me as I continue to lead in men's ministry at my local church and wherever God is leading me to. And Charlotte Weaver in children's ministry. Hi, my name is Charlotte Weaver. I have no formal plans for the future yet, but please pray for me as I continue to serve God in everything that I do. I now hand over to Dr. Nathan Lovell for the first and second year language prizes. It's a great joy for me to announce each year the winners of the awards for excellence in the biblical languages. These are sponsored awards and we have one for Greek and one for Hebrew. The first year Greek prize is awarded to a first year student who has shown outstanding and consistent ability in their study of Koine Greek. It's a 2000 Rand prize to encourage the consistent study of New Testament Greek throughout college and on into a lifetime of ministry teaching the Bible. This year, I'm pleased to announce that the award goes to Sophie Ashelford. Congratulations, Sophie. Normally at this time, I would also announce the winner of the Athos Scholarship for Hebrew at George Whitfield College. But one of the very few advantages of an online graduation is that I can ask my colleague, Dr. George Athos of Moore Theological College in Sydney to announce the award for himself. Hello, my name is George Athos. I'm the Director of Research at Moore Theological College, but I'm also a regular visitor to George Whitfield College. And it's my privilege to be able to join you for this, your 31st graduation ceremony in this particular way. One of the highlights of my year is coming to GWC and starting students off in their journey in Hebrew in second year. It's really great to see students enthused about the biblical languages, in particular Hebrew, 
and see them starting to learn to read the text of the Bible in the original languages, and it is so valuable. My family has put together a prize which is awarded annually to one of the students in second year. The purpose of the Athos Family Prize in Biblical Hebrew is to promote the consistent, applied and faithful use of Biblical Hebrew in the service of Christian ministry on the continent of Africa. This is something we feel very passionate about and it's a joy of ours to be able to support one of the students in this way. This year the prize is worth three and a half thousand rand and comes also with the gift of a commentary. And it's my joy to announce that this year's winner is Catherine Morrison. Catherine, on behalf of my family, congratulations. Very well done for your effort. Please continue to apply yourself in the study of Hebrew and the Old Testament so that the gospel can be heard and faithfully taught on the continent of Africa. Students graduating with our Bachelor of Theology degree are Kazmiro Alajabu. I'm Kazmiro Alajabu. Pray for me for this year to go successful. I'm planning to go back to South Sudan and serve at Bishop Green College as a teacher. Kwasi Butelezi. Hi, my name is Kwasi Butelezi. Um, please do pray for me as I'll be going back to student ministry in Durban, where I came from before coming down to college. Thank you. Amy Lee De Freitas. I'm Amy. Please pray for me as I move to Durban and take on the children's ministry position at Christchurch in Slanga. Eden Grant, who graduates with distinction, and she wins the prizes for theology and preaching. Hi, my name is Eden, and next year I'll be embarking on some writing projects which you can pray for for me. Scott Grant. Pray for Scott as he pursues independent study and research in theology and related fields in philosophy, political theory, and history. Alex Karimbia. Hi, my name is Alex. Will you please pray for me as I'm hoping to go back next year to South Sudan to teach at the Bible College. Michaela Marie. Hi, I'm Michaela. Please pray for me as I go and teach English in South Korea for a few years before going into full-time ministry. James Monaghan. Hi, I'm James. Please pray for me as I consider doing my honours at GWC next year. Cecilia Mumbi. Um, hello, my name is Cecilia. Um, um, please pray for me as I intend to do student ministry next year and as well as youth ministry. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Conwell Muyambo. Hello everyone, I'm Conwell. Uh, please pray for me as I'm looking forward to go to Zimbabwe next year and become a lecturer at Trusted Bible College and part-time minister as well. Thank you. Sajabu Lise Ndaba. Hi, I'm Sajabu Ndaba. Please pray for me as I'll be joining the pastoral team at Jubilee Community Church next year. Sponiso Ngobo. Hi, I'm Sponiso Ngobo. Please pray with me as, as I will be joining our pastoral team back in KZN. Gibson Nyaga. My name is Gibson Kimandi Nyaga. Please pray for me as I go back to Kenya, specifically Ebu Diocese, to continue with the ministry. Thank you. Matthew O'Kelly, who graduates with distinction and he wins the prize for Old Testament and Hebrew. Hey, I'm Matt and you can pray for me as I stick around here and do my honours here at George Rushfield College. Francois Poe. Hi there, uh, my name is Francois Poe. Please pray for me as I start working for Bible Training Initiative, a parachurch organisation in Stellenbosch. Iko Poswayo, who graduates with distinction and she wins the prize for New Testament and Greek. Hi everyone, my name is Iko. Please pray for me as I return to GWC next year for the honours degree. Thank you. Amanda Pungula. Hi, my name is Amanda. Please pray for me as I join Red Post and reach students next year. Conrad Rieda. Hey, I'm Conrad. Uh, you can pray for me as I pursue my honours here at GWC next year. And Alex Sawada. Greetings, my beloved. My name is Alex 
Serwanda from Uganda. Please pray for me as I consider doing postgrad studies at George Whitfield College. Students graduating with our Bachelor of Theology Honours degree are Moffat Chembe. Hi, I'm Moffat. Uh, please pray for me as I go back to Zambia to see what God has for me over there. Ryan Saunders. Ryan wins the Postgraduate Prize for Best Dissertation for his work entitled How Hospitality and Gift Stewardship Contribute to the Glorification of God in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. Hi, I'm Ryan. Please pray for me as I begin married life and seek to serve in my local church and possibly on mission. And Quinton Sims. Hello, my name is Quinton Sims. Please pray for me as I head to Port Elizabeth to start my curacy at Emmanuel Church. And lastly, graduating with our Master of Theology degree is White Zabofe. His thesis title is Brotherly Hatred and God, a literary socio-historical investigative study in accounting for the latter prophet's portrayal of Edom in the context of the ancient Near Eastern cultural background. Hi, I'm White. Please pray for me for the coming year, for the Lord's guidance because my plans haven't yet become clear. This completes our 2020 graduates. Now we've come to the end of our time together. Thank you so much for joining with us and sharing in this event with us. I particularly want to add my note of congratulations to all those who've graduated. And now will you pray with me? Our Father, we just ask that you will continue to watch over us. We thank you so much for this college, for establishing it, building it up, sustaining it, and producing this crop of students. We lift them up to you. They have a piece of paper in their hands, which is symbolic of an enormous amount of time really spent with you. They've spent one year in a certificate or three years in a degree studying under your hand and your aegis. They're your students, not ours, and they're your workers and builders in your kingdom. They actually don't really belong to any human institution. You have raised them up. You've sent them for equipping, and now Faithful Lord God, we commit them into your care as they go out from us. And we thank you for friends and supporters, people who've been praying, people who've been giving financially. It would not be possible without them. But in the end, we just want to say thank you to you. All the glory goes to you. And now won't you part us with your blessing? Won't you watch over each and every one of us? Keep us safe in the faith. We pray this in Jesus' name.